Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of my home theater AV rack. This AV rack also has all of the networking equipment that I use to run the rest of my house, including all of the pool automation, the access points for my network and Wi-Fi, my security camera, and also my NAS server, which I use to store all of my footage for these videos. But first, if you like the video, please remember to drop a like on it as it really helps me out. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so that you'll be notified when I upload the next video. I've been waiting a long time to show you guys this, so let's get into it. So first of all, I'd like to discuss the rack itself. It's a skeleton rack made by Sanus, model CFR1620. They specialize in AV racks and accessories. I went with an open air rack because the closet I'm using doesn't have a lot of ventilation, other than the air conduct at the top, and this has proven to be a good choice in keeping the rack relatively cool. I also added some lighting to the rack with the Sanus task light, which illuminates down and perfect at the top of the rack. This is powered by the Sanus multivolt power supply which has a thermostat attachment and can control the additional rack fans which are the Ultra Quiet by Sanus. I also added some LED tube lights to the inside of the rack which are magnetically attached. I have links in the description for these so if you're interested do check them out. Now as this is a newly constructed house, I had all of my Cat6 cabling terminated in the wardrobe. However the builder didn't terminate the connections with wall plates, rather they just crimped the ends and unfortunately they were not long enough for me to patch into my pass through patch panel. This patch panel allows you to terminate all of your endpoints nice and neatly and then you can easily manage where to terminate them inside the rack. To get around this issue I used a female to female Cat6 coupler with short extensions which then allowed me to get the patch panel connected up. This is only a temporary fix as at the moment I can't get an electrician into my house to do the wall plates. The same goes for all of my speaker wires with them just coming through the brush plate which means it isn't optimal for audio performance having speaker wires so close to power cables as they can interfere with the signal. These will be wall plated once the lockdown is lifted and I can get an electrical contractor into my house to help me out. The next item in the rack is my Linksys switch. The model is the LGS 552P and it's a 52 port PoE switch that I use to power my security cameras and access points. It was important that I had a switch that was powerful enough to do this and considering how many devices I have in my house I opted for a 52 port version so that I have the room to expand. I can convert this to a 10 gig switch if I get the 10 gig SFPs and that is the plan so that I can have the footage for my YouTube channel directly edited on the NAS. Next we have my Linksys LRT224 dual VPN router which allows for VPN access into the network as well as a failover option if one link goes down it will spin over to a spare one. I don't have this enabled at the moment but I may do in the future. This is a business grade firewall router and is perfect for the setup that I've got to enable all of the security features that I'd like. My Apple TV 4K is what I'm using to run my home theater. I run Plex, Apple TV Plus, Netflix, KO and all of my live TV apps through it and it does the job well. Luckily the Apple TV remote reaches from the theater room into the study so I don't have to always use the Harmony Hub to control it. The Apple Mac Mini server is a legit server edition from 2011 and still carries its weight even now. I installed an SSD and upgraded the RAM and I use it for a number of internally hosted websites that have a various functions I won't go into in this video. Next we have the brains of the network setup which is the Synology DS1817 Plus with 8GB of RAM and 24TB of storage. This NAS is great because it handles a number of functions on my network including the home theater with my lighting automation running on it as well as my private movie server and my security cameras using Synology Surveillance Station. Surveillance Station is great because although all of my cameras are Reolink cameras, using the OnVIF Universal Protocol, the NAS can control the cameras and store all of the footage locally. Instead of having a separate NVR, I can control everything in the same place. I then have a backup process that kicks in each night and sends snapshots to the cloud, which is my way of making sure that even if the NAS dies or is stolen, I will always have footage available. The NAS also manages DHCP address assignment with radius authentication which is a stricter way for devices to authenticate and receive access to the network. I won't go into radius in this video but if you're interested drop me a comment down below. While you're down there don't forget to hit the like button as well. My files and folders as well as footage are synchronized with a cloud storage service so that I can have peace of mind that even if my NAS is stolen or damaged I will have access to my data. 
I also have my Plex Media Server running on the NAS and it works really well. Although I do plan on building a transcoding beast in the near future, this NAS does a fantastic job of transcoding multiple streams across all of the various Apple TVs I have in my home. I have four Apple TV 4Ks, all of which connect into the NAS when playing movies and TV shows on Plex. Now, when deciding on my home theater AV receiver, I spent a lot of time researching and also working within my budget, and as such, I ended up going with the Pioneer VSX LX503. Initially, I only wanted a 5.2.4 setup due to the size of my room, and this receiver had the option to expand to 7.2.4 with an additional stereo receiver if I needed to. I was really impressed with the feature set on this AV receiver. It was very easy for me to run the tuning application and dial in the speakers to a point that I felt sounded great. I do need to do further tuning once I get my acoustic panels in, and I'm already halfway through a video on creating my acoustic panels for the home theater, so make sure you subscribe to catch that video. As I mentioned earlier, I needed an additional stereo amp to run the 7.2.4, so I picked up an affordable stereo amp from DJ City here in Australia, and I was very surprised with how well it performed. I'm using it for my height and Atmos channels, and it does the job nicely. I had to configure the Pioneer amp in a specific way to take advantage of this setup, so again, if there's any interest, I might make a video on how to do that using the pre-outs. The last thing in the rack is my Eaton UPS. I didn't go with a power conditioner as I have more network and server hardware in the rack than AV equipment, and the UPS does more to keep the gear online during a power outage than a power conditioner. It connects into my Synology NAS via USB, and when there is an event, the NAS triggers an automated email to me via an alert so that I can have time to go in and power down everything. I can even power down the NAS remotely via my VPN. The cool thing with my house is that I have solar panels and a Tesla power wall that I have set to hold 30% of its charge at all times in case of a power outage. So even if we lose mains power, I have a double backup of the Tesla power wall and the UPS to protect my rack. As a bonus to the AV rack tour, I'll let you know about my Wi-Fi setup. I've gone with a business grade setup using Linksys access points specifically the LAP AC 2600s. I have three of them throughout my home, and the main reason I went this way is that my router does not have Wi-Fi, as it's not a consumer router, and the best benefit of using access points is that you're simply extending your physical high-speed network to wherever you place these access points in your home. So the benefits are huge, because you can get high-speed internet and network access wherever you place them. I have a single LAP AC 2600 upstairs, ceiling mounted and it's outside my daughter's bedroom. I really don't want the Wi-Fi on while she's in there sleeping, so using some of the cool feature sets of this access point, I can assign a schedule to make sure it's turned off during the night and then turns back on in the morning. My other two access points are set up in a cluster configuration with them working in tandem. The main reason I did this is because of the smart devices like LifeX and also the Connect 10 require specific configuration on the Wi-Fi to make them work. This is to do with QoS or quality of service on the specific SSIDs or Wi-Fi hotspots. Prior to setting this up, my lights and Connect 10 would often drop off the network. As you can see, I have a lot of lighting around my home, which is all connected to the Wi-Fi. Even my outdoor kitchen has an RGB lighting setup. Right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought and if you have any questions that you'd like answered. I read every single comment, good or bad, and I generally try to leave as much information as I can to answer your questions. I have left links in the description for all of the things that I've used in this video. So if you're interested, please do consider checking those out. If you like the video, drop a like on it. It really helps me out. Consider subscribing if you enjoy content like this. Again, a big thank you for watching and you'll catch me in the next video. Bye for now.